Good morning. Bonjour. Buenos dias. How are you? <laughs> oh well, this is lesson number 59, the presentation, uh, whatever you want to call it, podcast. And it's for French and Spanish as part of the Languages and Culture series number one. Uh, because it's lesson 59, I was thinking, you know what, I'll go to 60, so next week will be the last lesson, the last presentation for series one of French and Spanish. Now, we will have done by then, uh, we've done the noun and the article and the adjective, three. We've also uh, done so noun, article, Adjective. Three. What else have we done? There are nine parts of speech. Do you remember which ones they are? Think about it. Uh, noun and adjectives go together. And they're two separate ones. We've also done uh, some of the prepositions. We've, uh, you know, I've sort of told with the other... Uh, parts of speech, but I've left out, and I did a little bit of it, uh, the verbs. The verbs going to be the main uh, stay for series two of French. Uh, however, the approach will be a little bit different in that I will do uh, series two whenever I want to come on and present my, my, my lessons, po podcasts. I might even do one, two or three uh, in the same day. So that, you know, depending on how I'm going with it and how much preparation uh, I do in order to achieve another 60 uh, lessons. And that way we will have series one, series two covering the nine parts of speech. Now, let's not forget that this, these uh, podcasts, these lessons, presentations are about French, but the real French is when you listen to it, when you read it, when you learn to write it, and finally the, bra the brain keeps on turning and it'll give you the speaking part. So the speaking part for me comes late, but that doesn't mean you can't learn a specific language in order to go overseas. How do you say, bonjour, ça va, uh, je voudrais, you know, what I, what I would like, you know, I want, I want a ticket. That's situational French. So in other words, you can learn parts of the language, but if you really want to speak the language like a Frenchman, a French woman, uh, one ask you. <laughs> but those two uh, will always come come to sort of uh, challenge us because we don't live in the country. Therefore, what can we do in order to enjoy the French? Well, French uh, for people in the third age, so adults, basically, after you've left school. For me, education is for life. So after you left school, what do you do to enjoy French? if you don't live in the country. Well, one of the great things is to read the language, to read about the French and the literature and the history uh, and the development of French society. Nobody stops you from doing that because there are also translations of great books that the French uh, authors and poets have written. So that's where we are with French uh, in terms of my presentations. And uh, today uh, we're going to finish off uh, with, um, we're going to finish off with uh, uh, the fractions and, you know, things to, that, that have to do, that have to do uh, with numbers, basically numbers, dates, times. Uh, and that's, and that's, that's part of the learning of French. You can't, you can't do too much in one go, you can do a portion at a time. And eventually, the, again, the brain comes in and sort of says, okay, you know, you know uh, you've got the books now, don't throw them away, don't sell them, don't keep those, because those are your French friends. 
the books that you buy and you put aside. And also you have then also this. When you got one of these, you've got also got a good friend because you can look up the words, you can look up. But don't forget that both the books and the and and the iPhones, the Samsung, whatever company you're using, they uh, they are just there to help us. Everything is going to come in here, and then it has to come out. Uh, you know, si tu veux parler en français, tu dois faire uh, beaucoup d'exercices, uh, etc., etc. Uh, so, I find it difficult because I don't, I don't live with French people. I don't, but I do enjoy the songs. I really love them, and now I've discovered a new way. I enjoy the literature part, going back in time and going back to the, you know, to Charlemagne time up to now. That's 12th, 13th centuries now. And the French, you know, they weren't part, they were conquered by the Romans, but they kept their own as well. So it's all part of French uh, history. Interesting. Then there are another 220 countries in the world. <laughs> so our learning never stops. Okay, so let's start. It's 11.32. I've gone over a little bit because, because I'm coming towards the end. Therefore, what I want to do now is sort of reflect on what I've done and continue uh, to offer uh, some guidance. You know, because I have been a teacher for a long time and old habits never die. <laughs> okay, les gens. So the type of people that we have in, in, uh, in our society, amongst us. We've got l'acteur, the actor. And I'm going to cheer the actor. Oop! Didn't. Eh? It wasn't screwed on. Because I was a bit late, I didn't transfer the water to my other usual uh, bottle. Okay. L'acteur. Le cuisinier. La danseuse. Le charpentier ou charpentier. L'homme grenouille. L'astronaute. Le chef d'orchestre. Le crayon, <laughs> a good one. Le soldat, l'agent de police, le fermier, le marchand, la chanteuse, le pilote de course, le mécanicien, le peintre, le boucher, le pompier, le facteur. Le scaphandrier, new one for me. Le peintre, le mécanicien, l'alpiniste, le dentiste, le pilote, le juge, le gardien de zoo, le boulanger. And then we got also la famille. Le père et le mari, la mère, la femme, la fille et la sœur, la fille, le frère, la tante, l'oncle, le cousin, la grand-mère, le grand-père. Beautiful. And now we're going to go and have a look. Oh, yeah? I must not forget to put my finger in the, where the, Sound goes in. That's what I did a week ago. <laughs> uh, by mistake, of course. Okay, here we go. L'acteur. Le cuisinier. 
la danseuse, le charpentier ou charpentière, l'homme grenouille, l'astronaute, le chef d'orchestre, le soldat, l'agent de police, le fermier, le clan, le marchand, le pilote de course, le mécanicien, la peintre. But I'm going to go back to La Chanteuse. Did I say it? I'm not quite sure. Can't remember now. It was just a minute ago. Okay, let's go. Le Boucher. Le Pompier. Le Facteur. Le Scafandrier. Or le Scafandrier. Scafandrier. Le Peintre. Where was the other one? Uh, where was the other one? Mm. Le peintre, here. Le peintre. And they say the same thing for le peintre on this side. Le dentiste. Le pilote. L'alpiniste. Le juge. Le gardien des eaux. Le boulanger, big smile, I just finished work. La famille, that's le père ou le, ma le mari, the father or the husband, la mère, la femme, la fille, la sœur, le fils, le frère, la tante, l'oncle, le cousin, la grand-mère, le grand-père. Beautiful. That, that's really quite good, really. When you think about it, it's uh, the wonderful words which you can now use to write sentences. Okay, so that's that. And I'll continue with that uh, when I do series two as well uh, to finish off and to review and, uh, and see what else we can do with it. That's fantastic. Okay, now the next one is, uh, of course... We're going to do the numbers, and we will start with, we will start with, uh, let me see, the fractions, yes, the fractions. Now, normally the cardinal number and the ordinal number are used together to form fractions. De cinquième, trois... So when you want to do fractions, you use both ordinal numbers and cardinal numbers. Certain fractions have special forms. Un demi, une demi, la moitié. Un tiers, deux tiers. Un quart, très quart. Six et demi. Cinq et un tiers. Neuf et un quart. So j'ai bu la moitié de la bouteille. <laughs> I've drunk. Half of uh, the, the, the water here in the bottle. So if I want to say this is three quarters, trois quarts. J'ai uh, bu, j'ai bu, or I have drunk, uh, trois quarts de la bouteille. Well, it wasn't quite one quarter. So now it's three quarters for sure. Okay. Uh, when a number with demi modifies a noun, a demi, D-E-M-I, or a demi, D-E-M-I-E, will follow the noun. Il est quatre heures et demi. Il est quatre heures et demi. Je vingt ans et demi. And then it says, write the following numbers in French. Again, if you want to do French and you need um, uh, a good grammar book, etc., you will need it. So come come to me and uh, if you come and pick it up, I'll, 
uh, I'll see what I can do for you as well. We can have a chat about French, where you're at, and what you want to learn, etc., etc. Arithmetical operations. The verb faire, to do or to make, is used in arithmetical operations. The plural font is used for addition, subtraction, and multiplication. The singular fait is used for division. Addition. Trois et trois font six. Subtraction. Subtraction. Cinq moins un font quatre. Multiplication. Cinq fois dix font Cinquante. Division. Uh, dix divisé par deux fait cinq. Easy, easy one. That one. Dimensions. Length, width, height, and depth are expressed in the following ways. Ce mur est long haut de cinq, de cinq mètres. This wall is, is long five meters. Ce mur a cinq mètres de longueur, de hauteur. Uh, you can say it in two ways. Etc. It's along the same lines there. Following is an example of how to measure something. Cette boîte est à 30 centimètres de long, de longueur, sur 24 centimètres. So this box, cette boîte, this box, box, uh, has 30 centimètres long and 24 centimètres wide. And sur 26 centimètres de haut and uh, 26 centimeters high, high. So, you know, when you go to the post office, uh, they, they, they check the, the length, the width, and the height of the parcel before they send it out. And that's what happens. Write the following in French, 10 plus 5, 18 minus 6, etc., etc. Now, in terms of the dates, the dates, the days of the week, and I've been, you know, I said to my students from day one, learn the days of the week, the months of the year, the numbers, very essential, basic, and also the, the seasons, but basic for, uh, you know, for writing. If you want to refer to a date, you can do it. Welcome to Curtis L. Tolman. Appreciate you coming on. Alors, the dates are, the days of the week are lundi, mardi, mercredi, jeudi, vendredi, samedi, dimanche. You're supposed to know this by now, if you've been following me and you're doing French. The months of the year are janvier, février, mars, avril, mai, juin, juillet, août, septembre, octobre, novembre, décembre, 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 with an accent on the E. Note that the days of the week and the months of the year are not capitalized in in French. I like to capitalize them. If you do it, they can't stop you, can you? But technically then, if you are you know, in a school situation and the teacher wants to give, you know, correct you, etc., they have to adhere to this rule. The laws of language, the grammar. <laughs> the dates are written as follows. Quel jour est ce aujourd'hui? What day is it today? Quel jour sommes-nous aujourd'hui? What day are we today? C'est aujourd'hui le, le samedi 10, 10, 10 mai. Today is the Saturday, the, the 10th of May. Oh, well, pretty close. We are uh, 20, uh, 25. 20, no, 26. 26 aujourd'hui. Demain. C'est aujourd'hui le lundi 14 juillet 2008, etc. The tenth. Now, not the following. Uh, au mois de juin, en juin, le 1er juin, le 2 juin, le printemps, l'été, l'automne, l'hiver. Uh, those are the seasons, and the other ones are part of this, uh, you know, remembering uh, how to say certain things in French that uh, are not. You know, they, 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 they are there for you to learn. You can't change them around. That's what they are. The seasons are all masculine. And note the prepositions that are used with the seasons. Au printemps, en été, en automne, en hiver. They are, so the seasons are masculine. And then write the following in French, uh, Monday, June the 5th, 25, Tuesday, December the 4th, etc. Now, in terms of time, 
the expression for what time is it? Quelle heure est-il? Time in French is expressed as follows. Une heure, one hour. Treize heures. Uh, treize, the thirteenth hour. Deux heures, the second hour. Quatorze heures. So you can do either up to twelve or up to twenty-four. Etc. So I'll just read them. Une heure, treize heures, deux heures, quatorze heures, minuit, midi, minuit et demi, midi et demi. So midnight and midday, cinq heures et quart, cinq heures quinze, dix-sept heures et quart, dix-sept heures quinze, six heures et demi, six heures trente, dix-huit heures, heure et demi, dix-huit heures trente, sept heures moins vingt. This week, heure quarante, sept heures quarante-six, six, cinq, dix-neuf, heure quarante-cinq, cinq, cinq. There are two ways of expressing the half hour or fifteen minutes before or after the hour. Il est deux heures et quart, il est deux heures quinze. So you can express in two ways. Il est huit heures et demi, il est huit heures trente. You can say, you know, the me, or you can say 30. When it is more than 30 minutes past the hour, the number of minutes is subtracted from the next hour. So you get, il est minuit moins 20. You go to the next number up, and then you come back. Il est 6 heures moins 25. So it's 5.25, 5.35. The word demi agrees with the noun when it follows. Midi et demi, minuit et demi, une heure et demi, deux heures et demi. So you got to make demi uh, feminine when it follows. When demi precedes the noun, this hyphenated and does not agree. So une demi heure, you don't put the e at the end of demi. When demi precedes the noun, this hyphenated and does not agree. With the, Le train part à 15 heures. Oh, uh, no, sorry. 15, yes. 15 there. À 15 heures. Le train part à 15 heures et 20. Et 20. Et 20 minutes. So, zero, zero air, minuit, huit heures, quarante du matin, treize heures, une heure de l'après-midi, vingt heures, cinquante, huit heures, cinquante du, du soir. To express AM or PM, the expression du matin, du soir, de l'après-midi are added to this time, to the time not expressed in the 24 hour system. So, six heures du matin, the sir de l'après-midi, huit heures du soir. But if you're using the, the 24 hour clock, there's no need for it. So write the following times in French and then write the above exercise in the 24 hour system. It's a bit different. Okay, well, that's that. I've actually managed to do quite a lot this morning. I didn't think I would finish, but I have. Uh, so next week I just do the review, the review bit, which I just uh, exercise. I'll talk a lot more about the nine parts of speech and how things fit in, and uh, then I close off for <laughs> for the for this Friday lesson next week. It'll be the last one, and then after that you'll have to come on to Tom Padula, uh, Tom Padula Facebook page whenever you want. You know. I suggest every second day, of, every day or every second day, you come on and see what, whether I've done anything that week. Because I, my intention is, my intention is simple. I want to do more, not less. But I need to be free because I'm busy. Uh, now I've become busier. I've taken on a few things like uh, teaching, uh, you know, on a Wednesday and uh, the Italian clubs, uh, the choir, uh, the choir. And that will be expanding as well. Uh, maybe I will also. I was thinking of clearing up the front, the front of my um, here of um, 
enseña that to have you know three four you know up to four five six people at a time who want to learn a language and I can give them my time so I do need to become more free uh, and uh, I'll take it from there it's all in good fun this is my retirement <laughs> but I also intend to go uh, on excursions uh, to the city, whatever, you know, to, to live a life, you know, to go for walks, etc. So I can't, welcome to Tony Angelino, I can't give precise times. I've done it now for almost two years, uh, if not, yes, almost two years. And uh, I've um, established my credentials, I think, by finishing off uh, Lesson 1 to 60 for Italian, lesson uh, 1 to 60 for French and Spanish. And in the future, they will be split up. French and Spanish lessons will be separated. And the Spanish, I will, uh, I will be learning in the Spanish. And as a result of that, I'll also, then it'll fit in very well for me to introduce other languages in that particular hour for Spanish, whereas with French, I can teach it, you know, I'm a qualified teacher of French and Italian, so therefore I stick by those, but I then also become a student when I present my French or look at other languages. Welcome to Teresa Alta Italia. Okay, so that, that's where we're at now. Uh, at the same time, on the Sunday, when I do Dante, I think uh, I'll finish off... Uh, uh, around 78, or I'm not sure, I think it'll be 78 because I will have done six uh, presentations on Purgatorio. I'm keen to start Paradiso and uh, it'll probably start on podcast number 79 from there. Then onwards, I'll go to, there'll be 33 uh, Canti, so 33, so 78 should be. To, to 11, and then when I get to 111, I'll give another, maybe, I'll go up to 120, another nine lessons to, to look at Paradiso, and then to look at the whole work together. Ciao, Teresa. Okay, so that's it for that. So we've done the fractions. Now, time for Cont Sympathique. But before that, cheers. This time, a Conte Sympathique, again, I have a Conte Sympathique. Not only do I have the book, but I also have the answer, the answer book. So if a French teacher wants to the, the, use these resources, I have them here, and they can be used in uh, University of the Third Age uh, as a reader. It's a very good reader, and I've got... Plant your copies to, uh, you know, and I can give it to you at a um, reasonable price. Okay. So contact me if you're a French teacher of French and you want to use Cont Sympathique because we're doing with my, uh, with my class, we're doing quite a bit of work on it. And uh, also online, uh, there's one of my students who's um, doing th these... Um, stories here uh, with the use of artificial intelligence. Isn't that marvellous? It's incredible. Anyway, let's go. I'll read it and show you the words, but it's difficult for me to read it like this. Oopla. What am I doing? Here we are. La jeune bergère habita le village de Don Rémy en Lorraine. Elle reçut la mission de délivrer la France des Anglais. La destinée des gens d'Arc était une combination d'histoire et de légende. Elle n'avait que 15 ans quand elle décida d'obéir aux voix 
célestes qui lui parlaient de temps en temps. Les voix lui commandèrent d'accomplir trois tâches. Reprendre la ville d'Orléans pour les Français, faire couronner le dauphin et chasser les Anglais de la France. So John Dark didn't like the English. <laughs> well, look it up. It's a, you know, an historical figure here. Comment la jeune paysan allait, elle, convaincre les grands nobles et les braves soldats de ses int euh, intentions sérieuses, ordonnées par Dieu? D'abord, elle leur rappela la prophétie qu'une femme perdrait la France et qu'une jeune fille sauverait la patrie. La première prédiction se réalisa. La reine Isabelle rendit le pays au roi anglais. Maintenant, la possibilité exista que cette jeune fille de Lorraine accomplirait la deuxième prophétie. Vêtu d'une armure et à cheval, Jean d'Arc mena les soldats à la bataille d'Orléans. Elle ne se battit pas elle-même, mais elle encouragea ses soldats en portant l'étendard. Après la victoire, elle voulut rencontrer le dauphin pour atteindre son deuxième but. En s'approchant de Charles, elle enleva son casque pour le saluer. Charles l'embrassa. Euh, affectueusement, affectueusement. C'était la seule marque de tendresse que le dauphin lui montrerait, car il ne le remercia jamais de ses efforts. Le dauphin, un homme de caractère faible, hésita à accompagner Jean à Rennes pour le couronnement elle l'avertit que les, les voix célestes lui donneraient moins de deux ans pour faire son travail. L'impatience de John le persuada enfin. Pendant la cérémonie, à Rem, elle se trouva debout à côté de lui. Une fête suivit le couronnement et tout le monde s'impatienta de voir, de toucher et d'embrasser cette jeune fille merveilleuse. Elle avait l'air timide et calme, la bergère qui fut montrée bien forte et courageuse. Les gens lui demandèrent « Est-ce que tu participes à la bataille N'as-tu pas peur ?» Jean répondit avec sérénité « Je ne crains rien, sauf la trahison. » Évidemment, elle se douta des intrigues qui commencèrent au moment même du triomphe et de la gloire. So she The only thing that she feared was betrayal. So that's it. And then there are the, the exercises here. Now the exercise, a beautiful story. Jean d'Arc, uh, there are a lot of stories uh, that you can look up. Jean d'Arc on your phone or, you know, with books from libraries, etc. And that's it. Uh, Uh, very interesting. Jean d'Arc. That's the look it up. Jean d'Arc, beautiful story of a young woman who also was betrayed herself. She said, The only thing that I fear in the end uh, is, uh, is betrayal. So that's that. So it's 11.59 now. Uh, Oh, we've done quite a bit today, uh, but there is never, you know, we did Consympathique. Uh, the, the other ones that I keep on, I want to keep on mentioning are these two books here. And I want people to come and get them because they are two little short one-act plays. And with one-act plays, you can talk to each other. You can do a little play again. I encourage French teachers to come to me and we can discuss all this. So resources are here. Of course, there are plenty of resources. French has got whatever you use. Uh, you know, all roads lead to Paris <laughs> as, friends, as far as the French go. Okay, now, 
the songs. I forgot about my songs. Songs. I was looking at the songs before, and I said to myself, you know, Tom, we've done quite a few songs. And so, which ones are they? Uh, I'll just give you a rundown of the ones that we've done. La vie en rose. Des yeux qui font baisser les miens. Un rire qui se perd sur sa bouche. Voilà le portrait sans retouche. De l'homme auquel j'appartiens. That's Edith Piaf. The next one, lyrics. Again. Milord, allez, venez, Milord, vous asseoir à ma table. Il fait si froid dehors, ici c'est confortable. Laissez-vous faire, Milord, et prenez bien vos aises, vos pains sur mon cœur et vos pieds sur une chaise. So done, Milord, it's a good one. And then the one after that is, is, uh, we did uh, rien, non. Non, rien de rien, non, je ne regrette rien, ni le bien qu'on m'a fait, ni le mal, tout ça m'est bien égal. So that's, that's three we did. But then I've added on, uh, the, the last one is Sous le ciel de Paris. Okay, so Sous le ciel de Paris. Where, I, where is it? Uh, I must, uh, probably I don't have it here. In Ah, sous le ciel de Paris, son vol une chanson. Ah, ah, elle est née d'aujourd'hui dans le cœur d'un garçon. Sous le ciel de Paris, marche des amoureux. Ah, ah, leur bonheur se construit sur un œuf pour eux. Sous le point de Bercy, un philosophe assis, de musicien, quelques badauds. Puis les gens parmi eux, etc., etc. So those are the ones from Edith Piaf. Of course, they are sung by other singers as well. So if you go to YouTube, you'll you'll see who else sings them. And then, a Salvatore Damo, we did Tombe la neige, tu ne viendras pas ce soir. Tombe la neige, et mon cœur s'habille de noir. Se soyez cortège, tout en larmes blanches. L'oiseau sur la branche, pleure le sortilège. So we've done these ones here. And uh, then, of course, the last one that we did, we've done a few more too, but we haven't conquered them. But this one we have, La Nuit. Si je t'oublie pendant le jour, je passe mes nuits à te maudire, et quand la lune se retire, j'ai l'âme vide, et les corps lourdes, lourdes. La nuit, tu m'apparais immense, j'étends les bras, etc., etc. And we did la nuit as well, and we've done a few more, uh, but I'm not going to, those are the ones, those are the six songs that, you know, we have done. So if we manage to do, to do uh, this one here. All at once, we've got a beautiful French cultural afternoon where students can perform and sing. Okay, and then you need someone who presents the MC, c'est moi. <laughs> if you invite me, I will uh, gladly do it for you. Okay, uh, the, the, the other thing that I did forget to mention we also did some poetry, some uh, some poetry, and the poetry that comes to mind is uh, Jean de La Fontaine. Okay, so you got the songs, the poems, and the plays. Beautiful. Next term, next, sorry, the next season, the part two, <laughs> the next series, series, for French, uh, we'll do the verbs and we'll concentrate on the writing skills using the various parts of uh, the verb. And I'll do the same thing for Spanish. So this is my Spanish now. I'll do the same thing for Spanish because I want to learn Spanish. And so for me, I have to put into practice what I preach. So welcome to Angela Imola. Good that you're watching and you're interested in it. Fantastic. So that, that's it. So now it's time for Spanish. We'll start with a song. Eh? What about?
the one that I, the one that I know so far. I even learned. I've learned cuando caliente el sol, if I've got the words in front of me, and the historia de un amor. So the sun is not shining yet, not coming down. So I'll do story, the story of a great love. Ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón, y en el alma solo tengo soledad, y se ya no puede verte, porque Dios me hizo quererte para hacerme sufrir más. Siempre fuiste la razón de mi existir, adorarte para mí fue religión, en tus besos encontraba el calor que me brindabas, el amor y la pasión. My God. Es la historia de un amor, como no hay otro igual, que me hizo comprender todo el bien, todo el mal que le dio luz a mi vida, apagándola después. ¡Ay, qué vida tan obscura! Si tu amor no viviré, ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón. En el alma solo tengo soledad, y si ya no puedo verte, porque Dios me hizo quererte para hacerme sufrir más. Es la historia de un amor, como no hay otro igual, que me hizo comprender todo el bien, todo el mal, que le dio luz a mi vida, apagándola después. Ay, qué vida tan obscura, si tu amor no viviré. Ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón, y en el alma solo tengo soledad, y si ya no puedo verte, para, porque Dios me hizo quererte, para hacerme sufrir más, sufrir más, sufrir más. You can tell, huh? I've learned it. That's a good one. It's a really good one. I love doing it because uh, now I can do it properly. And, you know, you need months and months of good training in order to get there with, with this. Now, we're going to do <clears throat> increase our word bank for Spanish, okay? So, we are, we're going to do the letter N. The letter N. Where is the letter N? Come on. N. We've done M. Last time and the time before, I think we do it over two, but this N will do it all in one go, okay? N, but before that, cheers. Okay, so nail finger, you know, the nail, la uña, la uña, in Italian it's unghia, le unghia. La uña. Nail brush. El cepillo de uñas. El cepillo de uñas. Double L, you know. Nail foil. La lima. Name. El nombre. Napkin. La servilleta. La servilleta. Nappy. El pañal. Narrow. Estrecho. Nausea, la nausea. Nia, cerca. Necessary, neces necesario. Neck, el cuello. Necklace, el collar. To need, it's the first verb, necesitar. I need, yo, no, es, yo es, necesito uh, el, el collar. Yo necesito el collar. I need a necklace. I need the necklace. Needle. La agulla. La agulla. La agu aguja. La aguja. Needle. La aguja. It's with a J there, so the J is pronounced H. Nerve. El nervio. Neva. Nunca. Nunca, never, is nunca. Yo necesito, yo, 
nunca es nunca es éxito el collar o never need a collar a necklace uh, sleeping I did get up a couple of times during the night but slept all right really new nuevo news las noticias News, news agent, el kiosco, periódicos, de periódicos, el kiosco de periódicos, newspaper, el, perio, el periódico, el periódico, next, próximo, nice, bonito, bonito, ah. estre bonito, <laughs> night, la noche, Nightclub, la sala de fiestas. Night dress, el camisón. El camisón. No, no. Nobody. Nadie. Nadie. Noisy, ruidoso. Nan, ninguno. North, el norte. Nose, le na, la nariz. Now, two, you know, we had el cuello. La nariz. The nose. Not, no. No, no, no. Not, not money. El billete. El billete. Notebook. El cuaderno de notas. Nothing. Nada. Nada. The Italian is called nada. But apparently nada in Croatian means something really nice. So this from nothing to almost celestial is the word. Notice. El aviso. Novel. La novela. Novembre, noviembre, number, el numero, nurse, la enfermera, nut, la nuez, nylon, el nion, el nion. That's enough for today. Again, you know, we'll revise these words when we're doing the writing. This, these words will come very handy. So that's important that you remember that. Now, Antonio Danzi, welcome. We have done this book here, El Cid, which is a story, a very, uh, one of the adaptation in prose, uh, in prose, it's an adaptation of beautiful, beautiful stories of uh, the early, you know, the, the, the early years of um, Alfonso de number sixth, of Castilla, he was born in 1031 and died in 1109. So how old was he? He was 70, 69 plus 9, 78. Was king of Castilla and Leon. The Moors invaded Spain in 711, so three centuries before. And were finally expelled in 1492. So they were expelled after seven, six centuries. That's a long time. The legend tells that Rodrigo, the last Visigothic king of Spain, took advantage of La Cava, the beautiful daughter of Count Julian. The Count was governor of a Spanish colony in North Africa. To avenge his honor, Julian made a pact with the chieftain of the Moors, Tariq, to help him invade Spain. The Count Garcia Ordonez was the arch enemy of El Cid. He caused Rodrigo's exile. Garcia Ordonez was a favorite of Alfonso VI, etc. So the first one is called El Destriero, the exile. So we start with the exile. And then after that, we went to El Prestamo de Raquel y Vidas, the loan, the loan of Raquel de Vidas. Gave money, la despedida, la despedida, it's uh, uh, the, the, the expedition, the expedition. La toma de Castillon, the capture of Castillon, uh, the, again, it's a city. La derrota de los principios moros de Valencia, la derrota. La derrota. I don't know what that means. La derrota. So if I don't know what it means, then if I look at the back of the book, 
and I got to derota. Okay, so I got to the to defeat the defeat, the defeat of the of the Prince Moros de Valencia. Okay, the Black Prince of Valencia, Batalla contra el Conde de Barcelona. So that's the battle against the Count of Barcelona. So that's number six, capital six. And then uh, and that finishes there, La Batalla, okay? And that's the, the, that's section one. Section two, Canto two, Las Boras, Las Boras. Again, we don't know what the word Boras means, so we look it up. Boras. Boras. Boda, wedding. The wedding or the weddings is in the plural. El Cid conquista Valencia. El Cid conquers Valencia. Se junta la familia del Cid. Se junta, junta la familia del Cid. What does junta mean? Again, we don't know what it means, so we look it up. It's, it's slow, but you can work it out because junta. Junta, to join. So, the joining of the seed, the, uh, the family of El Cid coming together. La batalla contra Yusuf. The battle against Yusuf. Then we got Alfonso, perdona El Cid. Alfonso, uh, he, uh, he pardons El Cid. So they celebrate the weddings after that. So wedding finished. And this is now number three. So the wedding finishes canto two. And number three is we've got, what have we got number three? We've got La Afrena de Corpes, El Episodio de Leon. So La Afrenta de Corpes. La Afrenta. What does Afrenta mean? So the, these, the, the, the words here at the back, very important. Very important. Afrenta. Dishonor. The dishonor, the corpus, our friend, the dishonor of corpus. Corpus, an episode of the, the episode of the lion. Batalla contra Bucar. So the battle against Bucar. Los infantes regresan a Carrión. So the Infantes, that's the, the royal family, they go back to Carrion, or they retreat to Carrion. Los Infantes azotan a sus esposas. Uh, the Infantes whip. Whip his uh, spouse, his spouse, his spouse. Las Cortes, the court. Las Tres Demandas del Cid. And the three demands of El Cid. And that's the three, that, that is the end of El Cid's story. El Cid, not bad. Not bad at all. So what else have we got here for Spanish? And what else do I have? I have something else after this. Yes, of course. A lot of people, when they come on, they all want to know, but if I got to Spain, how do I order this? You know, how I want to go shopping, I want to go to uh, the butcher, I want to go to a library, you know, a bookshop. Stationers, you know, the kiosk, let's say. So you want to order something. So you need to to know the words. Bookshop is uh, libreria, papela, papeleria, kiosco. So bookshop, stationers, and news, newspaper, kiosk. Tinta is the ink, tinta. A ballpoint is un boligrafo. Un periodico is a newspaper. Un libro, a book is a book, un libro. 
Una goma, una goma is a rubber, and un boligrafo is a ballpoint. But then you got tinta, that's the ink. Sobres, uh, they're called envelopes. A lapis is a pencil. A stanco, tobacconist, a tobacconist. Papel para cartas, writing paper. Un mechero, a lighter. Un paquete de cigarrillos, a packet of cigarettes. So, we've got here, cerillas, cerillas, matches, cellos, uh, stems. Then you want to go to a boutique. In a boutique, what do you buy? Clothes, a clothes shop. is boutique, una camisa. Boutique, 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 boutique. Uh, they spell it B W T W E K, but no, that's boutique. It's in in Spanish. B O U T I Q U E. Una camisa, a shirt, un sombrero, hat, un vestido, a dress, una falda is a skirt, una falda. Unos pantalones cortos, unos pantalones, a short, some shorts. Unos pantalones cortos. Uh, unos zapatos, some shoes. Unos zapatos. Unas sandalias, some sandals. Un jersey, a jersey. Un traje de baño. Un traje de baño, a bathing costume. Un impermeable, a raincoat. Unos pantalones, some trousers. Un impermeable, a raincoat. So that's that for the boutique. Now, ferretería, 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 ferretería. It's iron mongers or hardware store. Un abrelatas, un abrelatas, a tin opener, un abrelatas. Una linterna, a torch. Un dest destornillador, un destornillador, a screwdriver. Un sacara, saca corchos, a corkscrew. Una pila, a battery. Una bombilla, a light bulb. Cuerda, a string. Uh, una bombilla is a light bulb. Cuerda, a string. Detergente, some detergent. Unas tijeras, some scissors. Tijeras. Hilo, cotton. Una aguja. Aguja, una aguja, a needle, un enchufe, enchufe, a plug, un enchufe, gas, gas, sign. And then you want to go to a farmacia, chemist, aspirinas, aspirins, una venda, a bandage, Insect repellent, insecticida. Jabon, soap. Polvos de talco, talcum powder. Pasta de dientes, toothpaste. Una película, a film. Una stirita. Tiritas, stick in plaster. Un pain. Una, un pain, pain, un pain. A comb. 
un, un paine, un paine. Un rolo di papel igienico, igienico. And I think the final, the final one, un pain as a comb, un roll of the papel higienico, a roll of toilet paper. And I think for me, for today, it's time to sing again. But this time here, we're going to do, because it's sunset, <laughs> we're coming to the end of, of it all. So where do I put... My, my songs here, yeah? It's, you wake up by singing songs. Quando caliente il sol aquí en la playa Siento tu cuerpo vibrar cerca de mí Es tu palpitar, es tu cara, es tu pelo, son tus pesos, me estremezco. Cuando calienta el sol, cuando calienta el sol, aquí en la playa, siento tu cuerpo vibrar cerca de mí. Es tu palpitar, tu recuerdo, mi locura, mi delirio, me estremezco. Quando calienta il sol, quando calienta il sol, love me with all your heart, that's all I want, love. Love me with all your heart, or not at all. Just uh, promise me this, uh, that you give me all your kisses, every summer, every winter, every fall. Quando calienta il sol, Quando calienta il sol. But what about spring? What about primavera? <laughs> ah, give me all your kisses every summer, every winter, every fall. And primavera. Come on. Can't do that to me. <laughs> now, there are other songs that I've looked up uh, for... For, for this wonderful, you know, this wonderful way of learning languages. One of my, one of my students said, but in French, in semaine sans Tom, et in semaine sans soleil. A week without Tom is a week without the sun. <laughs> a good saying. So, because he wants, he wants to come. If he doesn't come to the class, you know, he does, he's not happy. Pienso che in sueño parecido non volverà más y me pintaba las mañas y la cara de azul y de improviso el viento rapido me levó y me hizo volar en el cielo infinito volare oh cantare oh nel blu dipinto di blu felice di stare lassù Y volando, volando, feliz, yo me encuentro más alto, más alto que el sol. Y mientras que en el mundo se alejea despacio de mí, una música dulce se ha tocado solo para mí. Volaré, oh, cantaré, oh, en el blu, dipinto de blu, felice de estar en su, etc., etc. That's Volare from Domenico Modugno, trying to get that, that in. This one here from Giuliola Cinguetti. is number 29. A las puertas del sol. Thank you, Antonio Danzi, for saying you're going strong. Of course, I'm doing Spanish. You have to be the bull. <laughs> El toro. Tenía un alma así limpida y pura que quizás por miedo a ti no he hecho nunca el amor. Buscaba de las calles más extrañas del mundo. En cambio se legaba a ti por claros senderos. Y ahora que siento tu cuerpo cercano, en la oscuridad te pido levarme contigo. 
a las puertas del sol, a los confines del mar. ¿Cuántas veces con el pensamiento te elevaba junto a mí y en la oscuridad soñaba tu mano ligera? Cada cuarta puerta que se abría me parecía primavera. Well, we're going to stop on primavera. It's a good one. It's 12.30 and uh, this is the end of lesson 59. Next week will be the last one of, uh, of series one uh, of the project Languages and Cultures with French and Spanish. And now after next week, then I become free of the Fridays and uh, will be... I'll be very happy then if people come on and look me up and make comments in my, uh, in my Facebook page. Uh, that'll be very nice to do that. And, uh, of course, there will be many other topics that Tom Padula will attempt. Uh, and I've put them already, uh, some of them, in insegna.com uh, in the blog section. If you look up the blog section again, you'll find... Uh, another three, I think another three or four, no, another three topics. Uh, the, the one with uh, cucina e salute, uh, cooking and health I've done. And then what else? The, the, the one with, I think the one, there's one with the songs. I can't remember the other ones, but we'll have to look at them. We'll have to look. So all you got to do is get one of these and go to now to Chrome, if you go to Chrome and then you write in senya dot com. Yes, I did got it right. Go. Here it is. There. That's the one. In senya dot com. And then if you go to menu, here, menu, see that? Then you get six or seven chapters, but you have to go to shop. You press shop and you get all the languages. You go right to the bottom. There, and you get blog. See that blog? You press the little triangle there and the blog section now says podcast that's the whole lot that's the generic one then there's world history languages and cultures that's french and spanish italian lessons divina commedia okay then coral improviso are the songs cucina e salute and travel australia with tom padula that's one now, these ones here are also being transferred to YouTube. So if you've got a smart TV at home, you can enjoy these as well. And you got to, the, uh, maybe next time I'll show you, uh, if you got to then YouTube here, the little square there, the little application. Th that's the application for YouTube. And you go up to the top and there's a little circle there. If you press the little circle and you write Tom Padula TV. Tom Padula TV. And you press search and here it is, Tom Padula TV. Now, the one that you need is this round one there, the, uh, the one with the hat uh, in the circle. That's Tom Padula there on YouTube. So if you press that, you get the actual, you get the actual page. And on that page, there are lots and lots of programs. But if you go to... Playlists right on the bottom, playlists or videos. Videos, there's 1,500, so it's quite a lot. But playlists will give you what you want. 
Yeah, they're there. there. World well, history, travel, the latest ones come up first. So that's that. On that note, I want to say ciao to you all. Thank you for putting up with me. It's a real pleasure that I put up with me on my own here. No interruptions and I can do whatever I want. And by the way, this morning, I wrote a beautiful article, which I will, about, about the voice, the parliament. I was inspired by someone who was talking to me, and a young lady was talking to me about, what do you think of the voice? And I said, gosh, I haven't thought about it, but since you mention it, uh, I'm going to do something about it. And this morning I got up and boom, I wrote my article in no time at all. I hope you'll enjoy it when it comes out. I've got to type it up now, et cetera, et cetera. And then we'll probably put it up, you know, read it out on my, my YouTube channel and I'll make it uh, part of uh, this uh, blog in the blog section. So I think it's an important, it's an important contribution to Australian life and to our life here in this country. Au revoir. Now I better finish, I better do it right. <laughs> Adios. The next week. This is Tom Badula from Tom Badula TV on YouTube and Insegna Booksellers.